is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 7 Pro and today in this video I'm going to be showing you the latest Corvus OS on this device and this I'm doing kind of an experiment with this video because I'm shooting this video on the Redmi K20 Pro on 4K 60fps so that I can upload on full resolution so I'll try editing the first 4K 60fps video right now but let me start off this video with the latest Corvus 15. So here the Corvus OS version is 15 and it says Ravenclaw official build. The update version is of 27th March 2021 and there are two separate versions one includes the gapps and one doesn't so of course I have flashed the included gapps version and if you don't know how to flash this ROM on the Redmi Note 7 Pro you can click on the card right over there. Jumping into the Android version this is how it looks like we have the Corvus logo up top and the Android version is of course Android 11 here as you can see and it says Ravenclaw as the Corvus version. The maintenance name is Tamiz Arasan over here and the phone specification it shows this is the 4GB RAM variant of the Redmi Note 7 Pro. The security patch is latest of March 5th, 2021. Then we have the build date over here showing as 26th March 2021 and the SLNX status is enforcing. The stock kernel says March 2077 so that's pretty cool. Let me go back from here. Let's jump into the system panel. We still do not find any system updater over here. So that's how it is and we have the gesture settings and from here we have the swipe to screenshot option. So of course you can take a screenshot and there is a scrolling option then delete and edit option also. Let me go back. We have the power menu option over here but the advanced reboot and stuff is not here. Those things are there in the customization. I'll show that to you later on. In the system navigation gestures we of course have this gesture navigation option. In the settings we get the gesture bar length then the dead zone and stuff. Back gesture animation is there then the left edge right edge etc customization is there. You can also enable haptic feedback if you want to but there is no option to actually customize the thickness of this wheel bar. There is the two button and three button navigation as well and here we have the quickly open camera camera option but talking about the camera I'm kind of disappointed. Now one disappointment that I do have over here is about the stock camera that is this kind of like old kind of google camera. Yes it works fine you can switch to the front camera and stuff taking basic pictures are totally fine with this camera but yes I am kind of disappointed that we don't get at least the google camera go here. So yeah you can install the google camera 7 and stuff if you want to from the description box below. You can also install ANX camera if you want to install with Magisk. You can watch that video from the card right there and you can get also the safety net working super fine after that with that particular video. This is the Riven launcher over here it shows and if you scroll down as you can see there are a couple of more options like the google feed tab and stuff is there then the double tap to sleep gesture is there so you can double tap anywhere in the home screen to make the phone sleep or lock and we have the notification gesture so that is cool and here we have the hidden and protected apps with that you can lock particular apps as you can see so from here if i lock some app like the telegram app let me show you if i try to open it right now as you can see it shows protected app so if i want to open it right now i have to tap on the fingerprint scanner then it opens the particular app and in the suggestions we have the suggestion disabling option and show google app option is there show search bar option is there icon packs you can also change so a really amazing stock launcher that you get have the google's discover page to the left and swiping up gets you to the app drawer you can search for particular apps from here let me go back you can swipe down for the quick settings panel widgets and stuff again is working fine this default wallpaper looks very cool let me show you from the styles and wallpapers this is the default wallpaper that you get and it looks very beautiful on the Corvus 15. Even on the lock screen let me show you quickly as you can see this is how it looks like looks very cool right now let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed first and as you can see the fingerprint scanner unlocked super fine let me try one more time. So this is how the fingerprint scanner works, works amazingly well and it is a very reliable fingerprint scanner experience. Right now let me show you the face unlock speed. And as you can see the face unlock again is blazing fast, no issues whatsoever. Of course I do have the five fingers over here so I'm not tapping the fingerprint scanner over here. So yeah as you are noticing the face unlock speed is fairly fairly fast, no issues that I have had with the face unlock. Now talking about the quick settings panel we still have a lot of toggles let me show you the edit toggle over here options like here you get all of these quick toggles that you can edit and add we also have the gaming mode if you want to add that right now let me show you the things which I have added and here we do get the Android 11 screen recorder and with that you can record the device audio and the microphone audio at the same time so that's great. 
Other than that, we have the reboot toggle too. So you can directly reboot to recovery or fast boot from here. Then we have the heads up disabling option. Then the volume panel is also there. So this is how the volume panel looks like. And it has a square rounded kind of look. You can also expand the volume panel just like this over here. As you can see, works fine. And then there is the gaming mode, which you can enable from here, of course, but you have to tap and hold on it, I guess, and add the gaming apps. We also have the FPS info overlay. And as you can see, the FPS comes on the top right of the screen. And yeah, it is a pretty big like font. I like this one. And inside themes, we have the pitch black and stuff. If you want to enable the pitch black dark theme, you can, of course, use them from here. In the settings panel, this is how it looks like. We have the Raven Slayer and the Raven themes over here separated. Right now, they do not appear in the settings options, so they have moved on the top part over here. In the violet parts, we have the smart charging, then the SLNX mode and stuff. Then we have the display KCL options. Let me go back. We have the FPS info overlay again and the USB 3.0 kind of fast charging. We have the clear speaker option and then there is a Mi Audio Enhancer. And with that, you can set the option to the Youth Edition. And sound quality via the headphone jack and Bluetooth as well should be really good over here. No issues with that. Then if you scroll down, we have the choose preset option too for the Mi Audio Direct. You can also adjust the intensity of the vibrator motor and also the torch itself. So that is good. And the torch and stuff should be working fine here. No issues with that. Now let's jump into the battery settings. This is how it looks like. We have this kind of battery settings look. If you tap here, it will show you the full battery usage, of course. And the animations looks very cool over here. And there is the thermal profile and stuff. I did change it for the benchmarking apps. And you can also set it to the gaming apps and stuff. And with the battery saver, you can put the extreme battery saver on. Sometimes the battery just like force closed. I don't know why. But these fonts, default fonts looks very cool over here in the settings. Like it separates a lot of things over here, like with the accent color and a little bit boldness it has. And adaptive battery also is there. And we have the design battery capacity, then the current battery capacity, charging cycle and stuff. Battery temperature is also there. By the way, the 18 watt fast charging is also working fine here. Then there is the screen on time and stuff. I would say you can get five to six hours of screen on time easily on this ROM. No issues whatsoever. In the display settings, we have the brightness level and stuff. Dark theme you can enable and we have the live display option over here. Then we have the adaptive brightness or auto brightness. Then we have the display size, the DPI and we have the lock screen settings. From here, we have the always show time and info. So that's always on display. And we have the double tap to wake and enable blurs option. Right now, let me go into the sound settings. This is how it looks like. Again, the animations looks very, very beautiful. And if you scroll down, we have the volume steps, vibrate for calls. And let me scroll down more. We have the screenshot sound, touch vibration, touch sound, etc. options. Let me go back. We have the Raven Slayer options over here. So this is where you find all the customizations. And in the notification settings, we have the ambient option, battery charging light over here. And we have the heads up disabling option and the notification headers and stuff. Let me go into the gesture settings. And over here, we have the brightness control. So you can adjust the brightness just by sliding a finger on the status bar as you are noticing. This feature is really, really helpful for me at least. And I do use it on a daily basis. Works great. We have the double tap to sleep over here on the status bar, double tap to sleep on the lock screen. Then we have the screen of button toggle torch and stuff in the gestures. Then inside MISC, we have the gaming mode, then the status bar items are there. So you can enable the Vaulty icon, headset, Bluetooth, etc. icons from here. But I don't have a SIM card in it, but Vaulty calls and stuff should be working fine. Full screen apps mode is there. You can set it par app. In call vibration options are there. Then we have the animation style and stuff. Let me go back. We have the lock screen settings and inside lock screen items, we have the always on charging again. Then lock screen charging info is there. Fingerprint around vibration is there. I do miss the thing that there is no option to always unlock with the fingerprint scanner. Yes, I do miss that while daily driving on this ROM. We have the media art and stuff. Charging animation and stuff is there. Let me go back. We have the status bar settings in the battery options. We have the battery bar and stuff. Battery style, you can change it from here. Like we have icon portrait dotted circle. Then we also have the big dotted circle and stuff. So that looks really, really beautiful in my opinion. And we have the battery percentage. You can enable it from here. And we have the battery percentage when charging and stuff. Now jumping into the clock settings, we have the clock style. You can set it to like the AM PM style and stuff. And you can increase the font size of the clock, enable date options. Let me go back from here. We have the icon manager again. We have the old mobile data type icon, 4G icon. Then we have all these vaulty icons. Then we have the view Wi-Fi icon enabling option. Also, you can choose the view Wi-Fi icons if you want to. Then we have data disabled icon, roaming indicator, etc. Let me go back in the quick settings panel. We have the quick setting tint and the brightness slider option is also there. We have the bottom brightness slider too if you want to enable that. Let me go back. We have the vibrate on toggle touch. We have the quick pull down. 
then inside traffic indicators we can enable it from here of course and then we have the hardware option here we have the buttons you can like enable wake device if you want to then we have the navigation option now inside power menu we do have the advanced reboot and let me show you this is how the power menu looks like and this google smart home kind of features are also there so you can enable any smart light that you have so that's great and we also have the advanced reboot over here as it is enabled right now as you can see you can directly reboot only the system ui then the system then the recovery and the fast boot options all of these options are there so that's it for the customization you can also look at the team of the corvus os and a pretty good like amazing development going on about this rom like it has been amazing the corvus os has been really great for me at least in the past too in the raven themes this is how it looks like we have the accent color picker and you can pick any kind of accent color from here then we have the font type we got plethora of fonts as you are noticing over here then we have the icon shapes again plethora of icon shapes are there shaders bar icons are there then we have the quick setting header style you can set it to accent color if you love that and the switch style is there this is for the toggles in the settings then we have the system theme and then again we have the pitch black google dark etc options then you can schedule the dark theme over here then we have the shaders bar height model then you can change it to extra large and stuff if you want to then we have the rounded corner settings you can set it to large and something if you want some like extra padding on the corners of the screen and in terms of daily driving performance this rom should be really really smooth and in terms of the performance i did not have any issues so far the whole UI stays very smooth over here, no issues with that. And here are the Android and Geekbench score of this particular build. Right now let me show you a couple more things like the safety net and as you can see it passes the safety net test right out of the box. So that means you can use banking apps over here without any issues right out of the box on this ROM. And in terms of DRM info it stays L1 so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p here without any issues again. And if you are someone who uses the IR Blaster on the Redmi Note 7 Pro let me show you. The IR Blaster actually works fine here so you should not be worrying about the IR Blaster over here as you can see you can see the light over here. With this app i'm just testing the ir blaster working fine so yeah even the ir blaster is working no issues so far on this particular build so that wraps up this video guys about the corvus os 15 on the redmi note 7 pro let me in the comments what you guys think about this video give it a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to the channel if you have not yet and please share this video with your friends if you want them to know about the latest corvus os working great on the redmi note 7 pro this is tito from kdn tech signing off for today and i'll be catching you guys in the next one bye, -bye now